We, we have a team of people who have uh, brought us to this moment, and you're going to meet some of them right now. Come on up, Andre, Salida, come on up. <laughs> come on, can you make it over here? I'll go on this side. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, we're, we're uh, uh, we'll start in a minute. We've got a couple other people arriving, but I just want to say at the beginning, uh, we have a, a team of uh, young all-stars here. I'm going to speak to, uh, about them in a moment. Uh, the people who you're looking at, the young people you're looking at, are people who have helped to uh, craft uh, not only this statement, but individuals who will be involved in helping us uh, shape what Cleveland's going to look like. So we're very excited about the energy that's present here and the forward-looking approach that, uh, that, our, that our presentation represents. So Andy, uh, and, and there's a young Andy Junowitz over there too. Uh, Andy, are we, we ready? We told him 5 o'clock, it's 5 o'clock. Okay, here we are, great. Uh, and of course, uh, a number of you know uh, Mrs. Kucinich, Elizabeth Kucinich who also I'm going to be uh, speaking about in this uh, presentation. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank all the members of Cleveland's media who have covered this city for so many years to be present here at this moment. Uh, thanks to all the citizens who are here. Uh, this is Tremont where I started my career uh, many years ago. I represented this area in city council. I graduated from St. John Cantus High School uh, just over the freeway. And it's a community that is vibrant, and we're going to do everything to help keep it that way. I, I love Cleveland. Our city needs a steady, experienced, healing hand in these divisive times. As mayor, I will seek to unify our city by meeting the challenges to safety and security which exist in every neighborhood. Years ago, during my first term as mayor, I set a standard for diversity and unity when half of my top appointments came from Cleveland's African-American community, including the city's safety director, who some of you may have known. I'm speaking of James W. Barrett, who was, and he was in charge of the police department. I, understand, I understood then, as I understand now, the concerns that exist in the black community about the urgent necessity of fair and impartial enforcement of the law. All the people of Cleveland have a right to expect safe neighborhoods, free of the scourge of crime, supported by a police department that is ever mindful of the limitations on the use of force. Community groups who are working hard to achieve closer review of police work deserve to be heard and to be involved. Ultimately, the charter of the city of Cleveland places the responsibility of chief conservator of the peace upon the mayor of the city. I am fully prepared to assume those duties, to support the police when they deserve it, to reserve the right to question police action, and to take appropriate disciplinary action in the event that departmental rules or civil liberties are violated. Any abuse of authority by law enforcement personnel will not be tolerated. We all know that our beloved city is being overrun by crime. Every neighborhood is at risk. Murders, shootings, carjackings, street assaults, robberies, and break-ins have increased at an alarming rate. And this didn't happen overnight. Our city has been enveloped by an attitude of hopelessness, where leaders lament rising crime, but do little or nothing about it, while citizens fear walking the streets, sitting on their porch, going shopping in the city, even stopping at a gas station. Good intentions and good wishes are not a substitute for good public policy and leadership. Cleveland, sadly, has become one of the most dangerous cities in America. 
working together, we can change that. As mayor, I will hire 400 additional police, build up the homicide unit, the scientific investigation unit, the gang unit. We will hire 100 safety assistants with special skills to deal with nonviolent disturbances and with those who suffer from mental illness. Because as we understand, not every 911 call requires an armed response. We will increase police pay and attract quality applicants to law enforcement through providing college tuition for those who will commit to five years of service in the Cleveland Police Department. We can and we will create a safe city, a peaceful city, where people are unafraid to walk the streets, where they're not afraid to sit on their front porch, where parents do not have to worry about their children being shot. We will reclaim our streets from the violent gangs. We will work to rescue neighborhoods that are besieged by criminal elements. When violent felons know that simply by driving away they can escape justice, they'll flee every time. We must permit the police to enforce the law. Violent felons must be pursued and captured. The city will purchase two new helicopters to minimize the length of police chases and the danger to innocent civilians. We must send a message loud and clear to violent felons. A strengthened Cleveland police force will pursue you. You cannot escape. You will be caught. You will face justice. When Cleveland police, facing the barrel of a gun, risk their lives, we must defend the police as they defend our community. The mayor has a singular role, a crucial role in that regard. The mayor must demonstrate to the community that fair, impartial, and even-handed law enforcement is a top priority. The people have a right to expect no less. I think we all know that law enforcement in and of itself has its limitations. We must go deeper to address the root causes of violence and criminal activity in our community. That is why, as mayor, I will create a cabinet-level civic peace department, which will identify trouble spots in the city and intervene whenever possible prior to an outbreak of violence. And we'll create new policies that address safety, security, crime, and rehabilitation, establish and coordinate new community-based violence prevention programs and conflict resolution strategies. Our Civic Peace Department will address all forms of violence within our community. We will create and coordinate new policies that reduce drug and alcohol dependence. We'll promote racial, religious, and ethnic tolerance, cooperation, and human unity. Our ultimate goal is to create peaceful homes and neighborhoods through an intensive community involvement supported by City Hall. The mayor in Cleveland is also in charge of the Cleveland Public Schools. We know that violence is a learned response. So is peace and nonviolence. I will bring to our schools a new peace curriculum where from the earliest years, children will learn peaceful interaction with others. <clears throat> Cleveland schools will be more involved in counseling and peer mediation. In the weeks ahead, I will unveil our education platform that will bring sweeping change to our schools so that they will become ever more innovative catalysts for restoring and regenerating our city. And some of the individuals involved here in front of you are going to be people who are going to be working with us to help draft uh, that initiative. 
Now, the idea of a civic peace department, by the way, uh, was brought forward 20 years ago when I was a member of the United States Congress. People have said again and again uh, that I was ahead of my time. Well, this is our time. This is the time for bold, visionary ideas that can transform our city. Young people from across the city of Cleveland are already actively engaged in our efforts. Thank you for bringing your talents and abilities into helping our community. And we welcome all young people with open arms. We're going to mentor them, support them in their own vision, and help young people become the most powerful advocates, young leaders who will take a community-oriented approach to government and politics far into the future. And remember, I still hold in my heart that visionary spirit of youth, the determination to change things, to right wrongs, to create new forms. We are truly together in that. Now, our desire for a peaceful community will be realized as we directly address the poverty in which so many Clevelanders are mired. So many of our fellow citizens, too many of our fellow citizens, are suffering in substandard living conditions which make them vulnerable. Our campaign will address homelessness, adult illiteracy, food deserts, infant mortality, insufficient access to health care, and the ongoing consequences of lead contamination of water pipes. In all of this, I am blessed to have the brilliant assistance of my wife, Elizabeth, who is a person of great accomplishment, otherwise known as Professor Elizabeth Kucinich. She's my wife and my teammate. And we have worked together on, on a national and a global level. And to have her help here, to lend her considerable talents and her vision to help lift up our community is going to be very important. And I wanted to mention this now because as we go down the road, you're going to see ways in which Elizabeth is going to apply what she's learned from working with people all over the world to bring to Cleveland so that we can lift our community up. Thank you, darling. Our administration will take an all-encompassing, holistic approach to the economic and social challenges which confront all Clevelanders. When I was growing up in Cleveland, my parents never had a home they could call their own. We were renters. As the family grew, we were forced to move. <clears throat> there were times the only place we could find rent was in a community of color. There were times when we were the only Caucasian family in a black community. Now, I lived in 21 different places by the time I was 17, including a couple cars. As a result of the experience, dealing with uncertainty, evictions, social disorganization, vulnerability, which comes from economic disadvantage, I understand what so many Clevelanders are going through today. And I intend to use my talents and abilities and everything that I am to help lift up our community and to help those who are feeling that there is no hope. I've been there and I can tell you that sometimes with just a little bit of hope, we can help change someone's life and a little bit of effort. And we're going to make a great effort in our community I have the life experience and the political independence to help reclaim safe neighborhoods, to re-energize re our local economy, to transform Cleveland city government into an instrument of public service, 
Many Clevelanders will remember that during my eight terms representing Cleveland in the United States Congress, my office handled about 11,000 requests for service every year. And some of those individuals uh, are in this crowd right now, such as our uh, case supervisor, Marion Carey. I want to thank you for the outstanding work that you did. You know, government has to be there when people need help. So I call on all Clevelanders to join with me to truly light up Cleveland with safety, security, a dedication to creating civic peace and new peace education programs in our schools. Cleveland can become a safe place where people want to remain, where they want to move to. They want to keep and establish businesses, raise a family and celebrate community. We will literally bring more light to Cleveland by increasing 61,000 streetlights, primarily in the high crime areas, luminosity from 80% to 100%. We're gonna, we're gonna light up the night in many neighborhoods. Now, crime is the number one issue. Safety, security, and a peaceful community, it's our goal. But I make it clear here today that if we are to reclaim our city, it will take careful attention to all of our challenges. In the days ahead, with the help of the people here, I intend to roll out a comprehensive program and programs to address every single area of great concern in our city. I am ready from day one to take the city in a new, upbeat, can-do direction. And I'm ready to work with you, the people of Cleveland, to achieve this. I ask for your support in the September 14th primary election and the November 2nd general election. We ask that you visit our website at kucinich.com for more details on how to get engaged. I look forward to all of us partnering to transform our city, this city we love. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Andy, you want to uh, take a few questions? questions? Yeah. A few. You want to come up here and just redirect the traffic? I'll swipe copies of the statement. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the filing deadline. And would you would you identify because you know I'm some of you I'll have to get to know again. Of course, Sam Allen, Team Magazine. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Dennis, the filing deadline. I, it's right on time, Sam. <laughs> Hi, Lena Lai from WKYC Channel 3. You know, you, you talk about adding you know, 400 plus police, 100 plus safety assistance. Uh, you know, arguably, you know, to, to add to the police force would be done. To add to two more helicopters would be done. But funding it has always been the big issue, right? So how would you take it's an important question. Uh, first of all, you know, having studied the city budget, the city makes choice and priorities. The city has a raining day fund with tens of millions of dollars. Uh, it's raining bullets in some of our neighborhoods, okay? We're going to tap that. The city's getting $541 million from the federal government. We're going to tap those funds. We have an urgent need right now. We can't wait. We can't wait for the neighborhoods to continue to be overrun by crime. People want to leave Cleveland if they're able to. No, we're going we're gonna to stop, uh, uh, put, a, put a stopper on this rising crime rate and engage people so that if you start to cut the crime rate, uh, it, it results in less loss of economic harm to the, less economic harm to the people, less loss of, of property. So yeah, the money is absolutely there. The question is, what are your priorities? Some like to just salt it away and wait for a rainy day. I'm saying it's raining bullets. Uh, Thank you. Congressman, Nick Cassell with uh, WCPN Ideas Green. Um, uh, what do you think the city has, has got to do about Cleveland public power? A lot of people over the past years have had difficulties with power outages, and there's been a report that the city commission has suggested it's time for rates to go up. The next, um, uh, the next meeting that we have, I will outline uh, the most comprehensive statement uh, dealing not just with Cleveland public power, 
but with all utilities that has been made ever in Cleveland. So stay tuned. I just today, uh, you know, if you please, I wanted to focus on crime, which is so serious, but rest assured that I do have some experience in that area that I can call upon uh, to be able to provide you with uh, a direction that the city can take that is absolutely doable. Next Senate, question. Senate, Kevin Freeman, Fox 8. Yes, Mr. Freeman. Is there a particular day or instance that you just said, I want to do this, I want to leave the city again? Was there something in particular that made you want to come back to the mayor? I think it was November of 1979. <laughs> 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 I, look, I love this town. You know, we still live off 117th and one never knows when a, you know a, a moment might occur to step forward again and that's why the message of of my career to the young people here is never quit doesn't matter you know life has its ups and downs never quit and so my approach has always been to keep hope alive and i'm i'm hopeful to once again uh mr freeman be of service to the people of this community, and thank you so much. Hey Dennis, John Cassidy from Channel 5. Yes, sir. Uh, have you given much thought to the bookends, the historical bookends that would be your career? You were the youngest mayor, and then the city's oldest mayor. Well, I thought that was my grandfather who was mayor then. Um, look, I, I, don't, I don't look at it that way. I look at it at my service as being a continuation. And I'll leave that up to all of you to make an assessment as to any larger meaning in it. Right now, I'm, I'm focused uh, not on myself, but we must focus our collective energy on what the needs of the community are. And if the people of Cleveland believe that I have the knowledge and the experience to lead this city forward, then, you know, I'm prepared. I am fully prepared right now. But as far as being able to make an assessment as, you know, when a career started and where it is now, that, that's up to you. I mean, I'm, I'm ready. One more? How do you plan on making the city a more attractive economic landing spot uh, outside of just safety like you've already touched on? Well, you know, as you understand, safety is a, is a prime concern. If people are going to invest in a community, they have to know the community is safe. I think all of us understand the difficulty that so many businesses had with the uh, damage that was done to property on May 30th. And while there's other issues of last year, while there's other issues that surround that, we have to assure the business community that their investments will be protected uh, physically. And we are going to do that. Now, beyond that, the plans to rebuild Cleveland's economy, that's uh, just like with CPP, that's another issue that we're going to address comprehensively. The, you know, each one of these areas deserves a very complete and studied approach. And I will tell you, we've already done that. So we're prepared to do that. But today, the focus must be on. has used yet, but we're going to start in Cleveland. And thank you for that question. Any, any, uh, Andy, we got you time for one? You know, I definitely want to meet with them to discuss it. Uh, as I said in my prepared remarks, I think that people who are concerned about the actions uh, that take place in law enforcement, they deserve to be heard. It's, an, it's imperative they be heard. As far as the details, I want to discuss it with them and then, you know, I'll have a statement then. Anything else? Anything? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Which question? A little bit louder, the traffic zone. Do you support keeping the consent decree here? Well, you know, Cleveland's one of the first communities that uh, has uh, that engaged with the federal government with a consent decree. And I have been following the implementation of it. There'll be a point, I hope, where the consent decree uh, will be fulfilled. And when that happens, uh, I'll be prepared. 
As I indicated, uh, it's Article 71 of the Charter of the City of Cleveland. Invest in the mayor the uh, responsibility of being the chief conservative of the peace. That's really the mayor's responsibility. It's not the responsibility of the Justice Department, the federal government. No, it's a local responsibility. We have to have local control of law enforcement. At some point, we will, we will meet the requirements of the consent decree. And when that happens, and I think it could happen uh, sooner than later, we will be able to move the city forward uh, so that the citizens who are interested in their involvement can be fully involved and that the police will have the opportunity to be able to understand uh, the new level of compliance that's required. And I have to tell you, you know, we're in the fifth, sixth year of this uh, uh, consent decree, and there has been changes that have been positive, but we, we're not satisfied. We have to keep going forward. Anything else? We got. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. And really appreciate you being here. I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you. Reach out to me if you need help with anything. Where are we going to do Sam, good to see you. Uh, you know, I set up over there for the, you know, the one-on-one. -on -one okay, let's go. We need a couple more of these. Okay.